And welcome back into the locker room. I'm your host, Eric Freeman, and we are smack dab in the middle of high school football here in the state of Alabama with a lot of games played already, but a lot more football to be played. You start seeing some shift up in the, in the uh, regions and in the brackets. And uh, Chase, there's, there's a lot, like I said, a lot more football to be played, but you're starting to see, you're starting to see the, the better teams separate themselves from the, 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 maybe the weaker teams. Yeah, and this week we'll be taking a break from region play and uh, going into some non-region games, which you know gives some teams kind of a break from, from that region play and, and gives them a chance to play some other opponents. And it's gonna be some good games across East Alabama with these non-region games. You know, it gives you some rivalry feels and, and uh, so it's gonna be a fun weekend. Yeah, you know, last weekend there was a lot of big games being played and, and one of the games we'll, we'll be showcasing here in, in just shortly is, was the Thompson at Oak Mountain game. And the brother, uh, Tuga Valoa, who's the backup quarterback at Alabama, is the starting quarterback at, uh, at Thompson High School. Mm -hmm. And, man, he's just as good as his brother. And he kind of showed out. And we'll have those highlights here shortly. But, uh, I mean, you're starting to see separation, especially up in the 7A ranks and, and, and on down into 6A, 5A, 4A. Uh, you got make probably a lot of the same guys in your 1A, 2A, 3A uh, regions. But, you know, your, your, higher, your higher classifications, you're starting to see some separation there. Yeah, you know, we're three or four weeks into region play, so this is when teams kind of take off. They'll move up the rankings. You know, you'll, you'll see the separation in the region standings. Of the, the better teams are going to be up top, and the, the lower teams are going to be at bottom. This is kind of when you get a feel of who's going to make the playoffs and who's not. Well, let's get right into the action that we had down here in South Talladega County here. And here's Childersburg here at homecoming there at John W. Cox Stadium as they host Elmore County, which is a Class 4A Region 3 matchup. Elmore County fumbles the ball, and Childersburg T.K. Kennebrew recovers and takes it 57 yards for a Tigers touchdown to get the Childersburg Tigers on the board there in the second quarter. Tigers do go for a two-point conversion as Jalen Chalen Kidd connects to Isaiah Jones. Late third quarter, Jalen Kidd takes it into the end zone to put the Tigers up over Elmore County. Late in the fourth quarter, the TK Kennebrew breaks up an Elmore County pass on fourth down inside the red zone. Great night for him, and Childersburg holds on to win 14 to seven there in Great Childersburg. Great defensively. Our kids played extremely hard. Uh, couldn't ask for a better uh, performance defensive-wise. Uh, offensively, we got some things to clean up, but we were able to take care of business. Uh, when it mattered, and so that's all that matters right now. Showed some uh, mental toughness late in the game, showed some mental toughness, uh, showed some uh, determination there at the end, and uh, that's what we've been preaching uh, for the past year, showing mental toughness, taking one step at a time, leaving the old behind, and uh, you know, a year ago, we're not mentally tough enough to win this thing, but uh, we, we, we're showing right now that we're, we're capable of winning games like this. Big region win. Absolutely, going two and one in the region means a lot, um, it's, uh, it gives us another tie break over Elmore. So right now we've got two region wins. They've only got one, and uh, we held serve at home, and that's huge. And the Fayetteville Wolves headed into the northern part of Shelby County to take on Vincent. Blake Matchin hands off to Cody Pate for a short gain here. Fayetteville four and out, and Tyler Allen has the punt blocked, and Vincent gets the ball inside Fayetteville's own five-yard line. Stanley Cooper gets the handoff and makes it into the end zone for Vincent. The Cooper gets the ball again, but is clobbered by Zach Robertson. Blayton matching on this stop, knocking his helmet off. Chris Hardy gets the ball for a nice game, but is brought down by Blayton matching and several Wool defenders. But Hardy's just too strong as he goes up the middle for six. There for Vince. That's a big old boy right there. But Fayetteville staying resilient. Darian Cook gets the ball, gets a little bit of yardage here, but not enough in the end as the Fayetteville Wolves lose to the Vincey Yellow Jackets, 38 to seven. There in Vincent, there north in the southern part of Shelby County. Now Winterboro, they take on Appalachian in a 1A four, 1A Region Four matchup. Third quarter, Winterboro is up 25-7. Quarterback. Omar Dobbins scrambling, look for receivers, tucks it and gets a little bit of yards there. Jasper Hutchins connects to Alex Bynum, but is wrapped up quickly by Cam, Bord Cam Borden. Hutchins again goes for a pass, but is intercepted by Luke Wheeler. 
from Winterboro. Gabe Smith gets the ball, but is quickly swarmed by several Bulldogs here. And Cam Borden on the run, scrambling, but gets some yardage there for Winterboro. He keeps going and going and going. Well, I think he wound up getting about 15 yards there on that run. Dobbins hands off to Anthony Curry, and Curry takes it all the way to the house for the Winterboro Bulldogs to get another touchdown there in Winterboro. But Anthony Curry wasn't done yet. Anthony Curry having a great night as he tackles Devin Payne behind the line of scrimmage, and Winterboro goes on to win 53-7 in a region matchup there in Class 1A Region 4. And uh, big weekend there in high school football. Uh, got Winterboro. Winterboro's kind of stepping out a little bit in, in the 1A, uh, 1A ranks. You know? And there's a lot of big teams there in 1A. Uh, can Winterboro hang on? Uh, from everything you've seen so far? I think so. You know, talking with uh, Coach Allen Beckett this summer and uh, listening to him at the Talladega County Media Day, he was very confident in his team, and, and rightfully so. They, they've had a great start to the season. He's really built that program up. You know, he had three guys uh, go uh, play college, uh, one at JSU, one at Tennessee Tech, and one at Baylor. So, uh, you know, he's had some football players in the past, and he has done great developing these high school football players. Yeah, Coach Beckett has definitely done a great job down there. I don't remember this past summer, uh, T.J. Green had come in and had his football camp out there at Winterboro High School. Mm -hmm. And just looking at some of those players from Winterboro, I mean, they've got some good sides for a 1A, uh, 1A program. Yeah, uh, for 1A, uh, you know, to have those type of players, that shows what Coach Beckett's doing down there. So uh, I think we're going to see Winterboro, uh, you know, make it several rounds in the playoffs. Well, let's get into the game we were talking about earlier, uh, Thompson at Oak Mountain. This was the game of the week for uh, WABMI 68. And Tua Tugavaloa, the brother of the backup quarterback at Alabama, he connects to Ahmad Edwards for 90 yards in the opening play of the game. And I think this kind of sh kind of set the tone. Uh, Oak Mountain got stopped right there off the bat, but Shadrick Bird pours in an end zone on another TD for Thompson to a connect for to Edwards again. Uh, this was kind of the combination all night, Chase. Uh, you had the, the the two cousins there, the two Edwards cousins, and uh, man, Tuga Valoa just his arm is amazing. Um, you see the interception here. It, I mean, just Tuga Valoa's arm is just impressive. Uh, you saw all night long him connecting to, to Mo Edwards and Ahmad Edwards. Another touchdown there by Edwards. Uh, but the, the, the skill of this quarterback, I mean, this guy right here is going to wind up going somewhere. Will he wind up at Alabama? Who knows? But uh, this was a fun game to watch, fun guy to watch. And, I mean, just amazing his, his ability to scramble and, and go upfield with the ball. Yeah, you can tell uh, quarterbacking is definitely in that family's genes. Uh, as you see these highlights there, it's incredible. Uh, you don't see many high school players that can do that. You know, usually, uh, yeah, they can do it in college, but at, at this level in, in high school, you don't see that a lot. So when you see a player like that, it really stands out, and you definitely know they'll be playing uh, on Saturdays. And there you see the final score is uh, Thompson 49, Oak Mountain 14 there at Oak Mountain, and this was a region counter. Uh, in 7A, and uh, you know Thompson, Thompson looks. I mean, they've they've got a historical, historic program, and they've had some success over the years. But you know they are real. It's like they've really gotten back into the swing of things here, and man, they are biting for that region right there. And you know they got uh, Hoover here in a couple weeks at Hoover, so that 7A region up there in Birmingham is is going to get interesting. Oh, it always does. You know those big schools. Um, you know, so much talent, great coaching over there as well. And, uh, you know, it always comes down, uh, you know, to the last weeks to finding out who's going to be those four teams to make the playoffs. And the Thompson game is, is the one I went and worked Friday night, and that place was packed. I mean, there on, on County Road 119, running, running between 280 and, and 65, there was a lot of traffic and there was a lot of people. But a uh, very good game. I think a lot of people knew coming in that, that Tuga Valoa was, is, is a He's a great quarterback, um, mm -hmm. and he will wind up going somewhere. But, man, just to, just to see him connect on so many passes. Uh, let me look at this. I had the stats here written. I mean, they had 415 yards passing with five touchdowns and uh, 17 carries for 170 yards 
on the ground with two touchdowns. I mean, that's that's a pretty impressive yardage. That's very uh, impressive. For high school. Yeah. But 415 yards passing, it, you know, it's just it's almost unheard of in the high school ranks. It really is. You know, you don't you don't see that much when you go to a high school football game unless, you know, you go to these big 7 8 games and that's where you'll see um, see that type of, of play and you know if you've never been to you know a Thompson Hoover Spain Park game been in that atmosphere you need to go check it out if you're a high school football fan because it's incredible yeah I think we're going to Pinson Valley this week and uh, I mean a lot of big games are coming up this weekend and you know you've got you know you got your games in Cowan County what are the matchups that you're seeing there in in East Alabama coming up this weekend the big one uh, Piedmont heads over to Leeds number two and 3A, and the number one and 4A. Uh, that's a huge game over in East Alabama. And then you got, uh, you know, some old rivalry games, uh, Alexandria, Cleburne County. Uh, they'll be playing at Ellie Bell Field and Heflin, and uh, Welburn is coming down to Talladega County to take on Talladega uh, this year in a non-region game. So there's some good games uh, scattered throughout East Alabama this week. A lot of classic rivalry games, especially with that Alexandria, Cleburne County. That has been a rivalry game as, for, as long as I can remember. And the Piedmont Leeds game has become a rivalry game because mm -hmm. you've got two programs here that are solid in 3A. And it's always a battle when these two schools play each other. Absolutely. Uh, you know, last year uh, they played Piedmont, uh, pulled it out there. And um, at Piedmont, they go on the road this year to Leeds. So that'll make it interesting. Definitely cannot wait to see the highlights and the, and the scores from these games because it's going to be it's going to be a big weekend. Well, let's get right into the rankings here. Uh, so we look at 7A rankings here. You know, not too much of a change, but you get a little bit there. You know, uh, Hoover uh, staying there at second and, and second, but Thompson moves up into third. Hewitt Trussell there in fourth. Oak Mountain falls out of the top ten with that loss to Thompson there. Uh, then you see Spain Park, uh, Auburn. Fairhope, Theodore, and Jeff Davis. But um, there in, in 7A, Mountain Brook falls out. They, they, they fall out of the top top 10 there. So, I mean, it's it's uh, you're starting to see a little shift there. Yeah, you know, and, and we'll keep seeing that as, as the weeks go on and these teams start playing each other is when you'll see a lot uh, fall out there. And let's move on to 6A here with Austin there and, and got the number one spot. But Pinson Valley, uh, that's the game I'll be working this weekend. And Oxford and Ramsey right there, two, three, and four. Um, you got some, you got some strong teams right there. Yeah, and the Oxford Yellow Jackets go on the road this week to Benjamin Russell uh, to take on uh, Danny Horn and company. So that'll be a good game. And the Homewood Patriots move into the top ten. So that makes a, that makes that Class Six A rankings just a little bit more interesting when you get some what you would call the usual suspects in Six A. Yeah, and uh, Homewood, Homewood kind of turned it on towards the end of last season. And uh, I figured they would make their way to the top ten. And Homewood is the home of TV 24's Gerhard Mathingani. That is where he played high school football, and uh, the Homewood Patriots there. I did not. I didn't realize he. I guess I do remember now him playing football there at Homewood. And you got to give a sh shameless plug out yes. there. All right. Uh, on into five A. You got Broadwood Christian sitting right there, and St. Paul's out of um, out of Mobile. And St. Paul's is a well-known football program. But you got Alexandria sitting there, number three. Yeah, you know, Alexandria went down last week uh, to Etowah, lost 14 to nothing. And, uh, but you'll see Alexandria pick back up. You know, Etowah is a great uh, football team, and, and uh, Alexandria will probably wind up sitting at number two uh, in that region, if I had a guess, right behind Etowah. Um, so they'll, they'll make the playoffs and, uh, if, if they can win out in their region. But that was a tough loss for the Valley Cubs. And Clay Central moves out of the top 10 and St. Clair County, the St. Clair County Saints move into that number 10 spot there in 5A. And look at the 4A. Of course, we were talking about Leeds and Piedmont this weekend. Um, you got Leeds right there. Andalusia, Rogers, UMS Wright, Fayetteville County. I'm sorry, Fayette County. Uh, Tallahassee uh, right down 280 going towards Auburn. Thomasville, Deschler, Wilson, and Hopes Bluff sitting in there, that 10th spot right there. Yeah, I had a chance to see Tallahassee this past Friday night when they were uh, at Mumford. That's a good football team sitting there at number six. And on into 3A, this is the big one for you guys over there in East Alabama. Take it away, Chase. Yeah, the Piedmont Bulldogs stay there at number two, right behind Mobile Christian. Uh, but then you start seeing some other teams from that region, Weaver, Randolph County, Ohatchee all sitting there in that uh, 3A Region 5 
and uh, which makes it super fun to watch these games week in and week out. And seeing that they're all still in the top ten after uh, you know they played uh, had all hadn't played each other, but some of them have played each other. And I did notice that Plainview Plainview did move into the, to the ninth position there. And Plainview is uh, they're traditionally a very is a they're a powerhouse. I always have been up there up there in DeKalb County up there as they call it, Sand Mountain. Uh, Plainview's always had a strong team. They have, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not shocked to see them move up uh, in the top ten as well. They, you know, they're good at football, they're good at basketball, they're good at everything up there. And let's get on into two way. And you got another DeKalb County Sand Mountain team in Fife. That's actually where my my uh, family's originally from. They're up on the mountain, but uh, you got the Fife Red Devils there, and uh, Lynette, Leroy, Aliceville, Elba, Lafayette. Actually, it's Lafayette. Sorry, I'm not no Cajun there. You can't say it like that. Uh, Goshen, Sullivan. Sullivan's another team from up there in DeKalb County. DeKalb County's got a lot of strong teams up there on the mountain. And, uh, you know, it, it, it'll be interesting. But, you know, your 2A here, uh, not much of a change right here. Uh, we get on down into 1A, not much of a change here. Uh, you got Mablesville sitting there in number one still. Pickens County sitting there in two. Uh, you move on down, Isabella uh, in ninth. And a little, a little bit of change right there as Georgiana moves into six and, and, and Houston County moves in there in the eighth as well and that is our top 10 in 7 8 through 1 8 lot start like I said start to see a lot of separation in those higher classifications yeah and then this is the part of the year where you'll see a lot of those uh, teams moving around and uh, things spreading out so it's gonna be fun to watch over the next uh, you know however many weeks we have left in the season and you can catch up on all the action every Friday night on pigskin roundup comes on at 10 30 uh, there in uh, here on TV 47 and on TV 24 there in East Alabama so you you want to catch up with all the high school action around the state especially here in the central and east northern part of Alabama tune in to Pigskin Randap with uh, John Holder and Mickey Shadricks Chase Robinson and Gerard uh, and then our very own Jimmy Dale Abrams gives you the South Talladega County report so make sure you tune in every Friday night at 10 30.